Amen. Hallelujah. It belongs to each and every one of us that name the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We give honor to the Spirit of the Lord, to God our Father, to Jesus our elder brother, to the wonderful deacons of this magnificent church. This awesome choir sing out of the depths of their spirit today, amen. Come on, let's bless God for them. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's bless God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody came here further now. Hallelujah. But the spirit of the song of God will be heard a little bit more, amen. Thank God for this choir, amen. Amen. Thank God for the blessings. Amen. Always on their posts. Amen. Maintaining order. Amen. Amen. We thank God for my wife. Amen. Amen. Doing her best to keep me straight. Amen. Amen. I said that's a job all by Amen. She makes it look easy. Amen. Amen. To everyone who makes up this congregation. But I especially want to give honor to our church mothers today. Amen. Amen. Mother Kendrick. Amen. Amen. Mother Ashby in her absence. Amen. Amen. It's good to have a sage in the building. Amen. Amen. Somebody has seen it before. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for them being here. And being a part of this wonderful, wonderful ministry. For the last uh, few weeks, we've been dealing with family secrets. Amen. Some folk were mad. Some folk were glad. Amen. Amen. We all have some kind of stuff. That we came up through that we need God to help us to deal with as sanctified and as holy and as wonderful as you think you are. There is something that we all need God. God help me to be better in this particular area. Amen. 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 And in that same vein, we're going to close this out today. We dealt with the individual family. Now we want to close this out dealing with church family. Praise right. his wonderful name. Amen. 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 You, uh, you, you should have missed this Sunday. <laughs> Praise his holy name. Amen. From the book of Acts. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. And we we'll began reading at verse number 36. Acts chapter 15 and verse number 36. When you have it, if you're able to stand, just stand with me for the reading of the word of God. Amen. The word reads, and some days after, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention, somebody said the argument. The argument or the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from another. So Barnabas took 
Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Saul chose Silas, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And they went through Syria unto Caesarea, confirming the churches. Before you take your seats, look at somebody like they owe you some money. Said, I need God. Come on, that was a weak practice, man. Come on, tell him, I need God to help me get along with others. Take your seat and get down. I need God. Help me get along with others. I'll just preach about myself today. My God. There are times, maybe it's just me, that we experience seasons in our lives where it seems like you're always bothered or annoyed. You don't know why. Things that are bothering you, when you look back on it, they are the same things that at one time did not bother you. Are you going to help me today? Maybe you realize that I'm stressing about some things. Therefore, the external things seem to be uh, abnormally a bother to you done some self-reflection over the past few days uh, to realize that someone is always watching me, uh, waiting uh, for the wrong thing to be said, so they can jump out of the proverbial wood, uh, Brother Pinkton. And say, I thought you were a Christian. I wish I had somebody in here. Christians, we must fully understand that it's important to get along with others. And can I tell you the truth that this concept is much harder for some than it is for others. Christianity is diverse. So many people with so many backgrounds and so many attitudes and so many hidden agendas. Some are old and some young. Some rich and some not so rich. Some say long and some say a much shorter time. Some with degrees and others may have dropped out of school. However, no matter what the circumstances, uh, we all come into the house of the Lord. We set aside all of that stuff in the name of worshiping the Lord. Yet, conflict seems to arise. Sometimes, beloved, the conflict is uh, external. But how many know that every conflict you have is not always external? Every now and then. And like I said, I've been going to preach about that. <laughs> Every now and then, we experience an internal yeah. conflict. Yeah. There are times when the enemy is out there. Yeah. But there are other times when the enemy is in a me. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, now nah, he's talking about you now. Yeah. We 
and you know who your enemy is, you don't take your enemy lightly. Amen. You got to put on the whole armor of God so you can be ready to go in the battle. And then you understand that, listen, if I'm going to win, I've got to fight in the strength of God. And sometimes, hear me now, sometimes you have to fight your own self. You know how to tell everybody else to shut up. But sometimes you got to tell yourself, close your mouth. You better hear what I'm saying. You know how to tell everybody, stay out of my business. But there ought to be a time where you tell yourself, mind your own King Saul, known for having an internal struggle. The Bible says that every now and then he would wrestle with his own deep. Can I put note here and tell you that, watch this, everything that we're dealing with in society and in the media is not always the devil. I'm doing the best I can. There's some things that are not the devil. Lord, I wish Quentin was here. Because Quentin would testify that mental illness is real. Y'all better hear me today. Uh, and, 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 and when the church realizes that everybody that's here is not here. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. don't want to talk <laughs> There are more people, and I don't, I got a therapy myself, y'all. Deal with, deal with some of y'all. <laughs> I have to go in there and lay on that couch myself and I have to be somebody to talk to. <laughs> Look at who's sitting around you. You'll see why. Then look around. Go. I see why he had to go. I see why. <laughs> but when you realize that, listen, if you are not mentally strong, yeah, yeah, yeah. it can cause you to act in certain ways yeah, that you yourself cannot even explain. Just sitting there talking and then you just go left. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody been like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You done slept all night long. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wake up and just mad for no reason. Yeah, yeah. Slept by yourself. Yeah. In the house by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's why you mad. Yeah, yeah. But that ain't on my phone. Church, we can help people when we realize that mental illness is real. We'll be able to lead more people to Christ when we understand that there are those that are genuinely suffering from a mental illness. Instead of just slaying it all on Tell them, just believe God. God is able to do all things. But watch this. Let me, let me, let me show you, because somebody's going to say, all they need to do is just believe God. Well, if you broke your leg, you're not going to lay down. I'm just going to lay hands on myself and just tell the Lord to heal this bone and put this bone. You're going to get your holy self up. And go get yourself treated. Amen. 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 Victory is not always easy. It's not always instantaneous. It does not always come without a struggle, a sweat, a sacrifice, some blood. Nor does one victory uh, automatically assure you for the next victory. 
you and I cannot live in the strength of yesterday's bread. Because we serve a, a God that says his mercies are renewed daily. That lets me know that the devil reloads daily. Furthermore, watch this. No two people are battling the exact same issue. What, what tempts me may not bother you. And what trips me up may cause you no problem. Hear me. The devil tailors your assault directly for you. Therefore, you and I face battles that, that may not all be uh, seen, but they are all very real. When we began to experience these internal battles, ah, uh, yeah, it began to show every night and how we respond and how we react to other people. And when we got some stuff that we hadn't dealt with for ourselves, yes, now we find that it's hard to get along oh, yeah. with other people. Amen. I know we're going to be quiet. Amen. 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 Watch this. Uh, but Taylor, it's, it's hard to get along with others if you have a hard time getting along with yourself. Y'all better hear me. It, it, it's, it's, it's a tough proposition. When you begin to deal with your internal battles, because those internal battles many times keep you from being profitable for your own good. How many times if you would have just shut your mouth, things would have worked out for you. But you just got to have the last word. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Ooh. And you told yourself, nobody gonna talk to me like that. Nobody gonna handle me like that. Nobody gonna do me like that. And the whole time, God was telling you, be still and know that I'm God, but you kept on being you. I know him right now. I know him right now. Hard to get along with other folks. We make statements like, I just don't deal well with other women. I heard that so much, it makes me itch when I hear it. Watch this. I was reading this novel a while back, and it was about shipwreck. Tom Hanks made it into a movie. Called Castaway. This man was marooned up, stranded on a desert island. And he was out there for a long time by himself. And, and finally, he got the attention of a ship passing by. They sent a little crew over in a law, a smaller boat to rescue him. And when the team got there, they they, they got to shore and, and, and they saw that the man had three huts built. And they said, are you the only one? He said, yes, yes, I'm the only one here. Are you sure? Yes, I'm the only one here. Well, they asked him, well, why do you have three huts? He said, well, the first hut is my house. The second hut is my church. And the third one is the church I used to go to. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to get along. I know 
some of y'all men just want to say, he talking to you, baby. He sure talking to you, baby. Ah, but you better not say it. You know what I mean? Keep on looking straight. Sometimes, just as we get into trouble because we, we try to get in the ring with the devil that we're not charged to fight. All right. We, we, if you want to stay out of trouble, stop trying to do God's job. Stop trying to do what Jesus said only he could pray. When Jesus dealt with the devil, he didn't go tit for tat. Every time the devil came to him, he said, it is written. He rebuilt the devil with the word of God. So if Jesus had to do that, we've got to do the same. Every church I've served, every church I've known, there's always been disagreement. There's going to be a church disagreement between members at times, mm -hmm. between the leaders, and many times between the members and the pastor. Mm -hmm. Disagreements aren't bad. Mm -hmm. It's when people become disagreeable mm -hmm. that things get bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quiet, 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 quiet. <laughs> I've heard the saying that says, it, 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 it's nothing wrong with disagreeing, uh, but when you become disagreeable in your attitude, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. in your speech, that's, it. That's, it. that's when we have a real problem. And in our text, uh -huh. we read about the Apostle Paul that was having and experiencing a disagreement with another Christian. One disagreement had to do with principle. The second disagreement had to do with opinion or preference. Stay with me, church. In Acts 13, take describes how the church was moved by the Spirit of God to set aside Paul and Barnabas for the work of evangelizing Asia Minor. And watch this. Together, these two brothers that came up in the ministry together, that were set aside together, that were commissioned and sent out together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They spread the gospel throughout the island of Cyprus yeah. and all into Asia Minor. Yeah, Watch this. Mm -hmm. Barnabas had a cousin. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Barnabas had a cousin by the name of Mark. Mark started out with them, but somewhere along the line, Mark deserted them. He said, I don't want to do this. Sick, I don't want to go. So when we fast forward to chapter 15, they finished their first missionary journey. And now Paul is saying to Barnabas, let's go back and check on the churches in Cyprus and in Asia Minor. Uh -huh. Bible says, oh, let, let's do this. He was raring to go. And watch this. The problem came when Bible said, and I'll bring my cousin, John Mark, with us. Paul said, mm -mm. no, he, he flaked out on us the last time, and I just don't think he's a good fit, just, we didn't leave him where he is, and sometimes with y'all family, yeah. you need to leave him, y'all don't want to hear me do that, you keep messing up your money, you keep running off your time, you keep causing conflicts in your own marriage, fooling around with your family. Hey, my brother. Your brother blew his money. So what? Hey, my sister. She need to go get her own job. I know you don't want to hear it. Now y'all 
fight in your house over a family member. Paul said, no, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not even trying to hear that. We don't need to fool with him. I'm telling you, he left us the last time. But it was fast. <laughs> so they, the text says that the argument was so sharp. In other words, they were, <laughs> they were saying some stuff. Yeah. And you know, because you got saved don't mean you forgot how to say some stuff. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Don't look at me all screwed yeah. Some of y'all can still tie some stuff together right now. Yeah. Praise the holy name. Amen. 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 You get me on the wrong day. Amen. <laughs> let, me, let me stay saved. Amen. Let me stay, <laughs> let me stay there. Amen. Brother Bowen, and sometimes you catch me on the wrong time. Don't back me in the corner. Because I'm saved, don't mean I haven't got out of no hands. Come on, somebody. But let me stay in the Bible. Let me stay in the Bible. <laughs> the text says that they had a had a bad argument. And it was so bad until one would not give and the other would not budge. And they said, you know what? You go your way. I'll go mine. Powerful team, but they let a disagreement come between all that they had been able to accomplish together. Bonnie got his cousin, John Mark, and they went on over to Cyprus. Big Fred, what's so bad about this when you read the Bible? Is after this text, you never hear from Barnabas again in Scripture. Paul goes on and gets Silas. And they go on out through Asia Minor, preaching and teaching. Here they were now, classmates in seminary. Here they were now, partners on the first missionary journey. Here they were now. Jerusalem, the church at Jerusalem had picked Paul and Barnabas. And now, because of a disagreement, they could no longer walk together. Let me drill that on that. How many times have we been in close relationship with somebody? But we messed around and allowed a disagreement yes, to come between our relationship. I'm right. No, you're wrong. My way. No, my way. You should have said that. You should have done that. And we're willing to go away all of that time, all of that uh, ministry together yes, sir. over this isn't it strange that that happened to Paul but it's still happening in the church right now I don't agree What I love about Green Road is you can have your say, uh -huh. but you can't have your way. <laughs> no, ma'am, no, sir. You can talk all you want to. But there's a way we going. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah man, watch. They, 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 they couldn't walk together. They were upset. And they threw away all of that. And watch this right here. This is what's so heartbreaking. Is that these two brothers that were so close. I want you to see this. 
they were so close. Sometimes, if we look at our own family life, look at the church, there were people that were tighter than tight. That you were close to. And watch this. You didn't, you didn't split like Paul and Silas. You didn't split up over a doctrinal issue. You, 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 you split up and you stop walking together over a judgment call. And the majority of the time in the church, the problem with many of us is we cannot deal with somebody not agreeing with our opinion. And if you don't like my opinion, if you don't like my preference, you got to go. I know I'm right. Get mad and won't even speak. In God's house, walk right by each other, rolling eyes. Go all the way on the other side of the church. So you don't even have to go by them. And yeah, watch this right Let me show you how crazy folk is. Can I You don't like each other. You fell out. Uh -huh. But then you want to watch and see where they at. <laughs> you walk in the church, you don't know where your husband at, you don't know where your wife at, but the one you don't like. <laughs> you know I'm right, y'all know I'm right. You got to do that because you don't want to accidentally run. Preach, I can talk. All the girls got to tell right now. so far will leave the church and won't come back. Uh -huh. yeah. Won't answer phone call. Yes, because you know the phone call is a call for reconciliation. Yeah. Yeah. But because you don't want to be reconciled, you want to be mad. Yeah. You don't want to reconcile. You want to be upset. Yeah. You don't want to be reconciled. Yeah. You want to be offended. Yeah. You don't want to reconcile. Yeah. You want to just be like you are. It's all over an opinion yes, right. or a preference. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, let me show you. Let me see. Because some of y'all know what the difference between a preference and yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me show you. Yeah. Let me show you. When I get dressed, I put socks one foot, socks on the other foot, shoe on one foot. Other folk put a sock on, put a shoe on. They go to the other foot, put a sock on, put a shoe on. Now, me personally, I don't like that. Watch this. But is it right? Is it wrong? No, it's just their preference. When I'm eating, don't have all my food touching everything. I don't want all that. Don't pile my stuff on my plate. Separate it. Yeah, that's what they tell me. They all going down the same. But I want to taste the difference every while before it go down. You know what? Is that right? Is it wrong? No. It's just mine. Some of y'all, some of y'all can't. I'm trying to help somebody here now. When you understand that we all have different opinions, we all have different preferences, and that doesn't make it right or wrong. It just makes us who we are. You're falling out with people. Because you like natural hair, and they got a perm. Choose not to paint your barn. Come on, somebody. Amen. But they choose to wear makeup. So you know, I just don't. I just take it. But preference. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. I choose to go to Tidal Wave to get my car clean. 
you'll choose to wash your car in your yard. If both my cars are clean, what does it matter? It's just preference. Barnabas allowed preference of choices to come between them. And they split up and they broke relationships. Couldn't get past it. Because of preferences and opinions. Barnabas leaves off the scene. And when you I want y'all to catch this, this is the footnote the Bible reads. When you read about Paul and Barnabas in Acts chapter 13. Mm -hmm. The text says Barnabas and Paul. Mm -hmm. The law of first mention means that Barnabas was the senior. Mm -hmm. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. But after chapter, Acts chapter 15, Barnabas falls off the scene. That means you can be on top one day. But if you don't have no things the right way, you'll fall off the scene also. Yeah. Amen. I know I'm right now. Look at, look at her now. Bob was fell off. I was trying to get this thing here. I was trying to get this. They fall out over Bob. Ten years later. See, Barnabas was much younger than him. Ten years later now, Barnabas has grown up. Not Barnabas, but rather John Mark. John Mark now has grown up. Paul and Barnabas never got back together. But ten years later, Barnabas sent word to Timothy. He said, bring me the parchments. Bring me my, my cloak, bring my coat. And he said, and by the way, bring John Mark with you. For he'll be profitable for me in ministry. He had to grow up some. Just because he wasn't being able to use, be used at that time did not mean that God was not going to use him later. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, and, and Barnabas and Paul fell out because Paul saw that Barnabas, was, that, that John Mark was not ready, but because it was my cousin. Mm -hmm. And some of y'all are trying to take family folk where they're not ready to go with you. I know I'm right. Uh -huh. Amen. I want you to I want you to get in there. And I want you to do the difficult thing in the church. Sometimes the most difficult thing is simply to get along with other people. That's the simplest thing. How, how do I just get along? You know how to out give people. But how do I just learn how to get along? See, I don't know if y'all young grow up in my mama house, but in my mama house, my mama had a rule. She said, y'all gonna get along. Are you gonna wish you had? <laughs> my sister, no, my sister is just it. My mama used to do stuff like this. You be about to argue and carry on? She said, y'all come here. She said, kiss your sister. And man, I'd rather take a whooping. <laughs> and sometimes I got the whooping me and still had to kiss my own sister. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Because we didn't want to get along with one another. Amen. Amen. And some of you in here right now, this word is from the Lord. He's trying to tell you, it's time now. You got to put all that foolishness aside. And start working on getting along with other people. Yep. You, you can't, you cannot explain to me yes. why it is everywhere you go, some starts. Say it again. Say it again. Okay, where you go? You in the church? You always if something come up, your name in. Go on the job. Something come up, your name in. And your answer is they always bother me. They always be. No, no. Ask yourself, what is it about me? 
that makes other people feel like they do toward me. Some things you can't change. And sometimes you're not going to get along with people until you start evaluating your own self. Husbands, men, it can't be if she just do what I tell her to do. Ain't that right, Brother Davis? She just do what I tell her to do. No, Brother Davis is no, no. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and women on the other foot, it can't be if he just does what I tell him to do. Some things will not work out until we start evaluating our own self. And can I tell you? It's time that we hold ourselves to the same standard that we're holding everybody else to. Because the truth be told, some of us can't live up to the standard that we're trying to put on everybody else. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you mess up, it was a mistake. But when they mess up, they meant to do it. Come on, somebody. You said the wrong thing, and it was just a slip of the tongue. I just didn't phrase it. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 it was an inartful statement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sister really you like that? That's an inartful statement. <laughs> My name is very different. But, what I but when somebody else says something wrong, you meant to say what you said. We can't, we can't hold that story. And what if they did mean? When they ask you for forgiveness, you got to go now to what God told you to do now. How many times should I forgive my brother? That's what they asked Jesus in one day. And Jesus said seven, the law says seven times in one day. Then Jesus came back and said seven times, seven is seven. One day. And you run around here talking about something happened four, five, ten years ago. Get along. Get along with other folks. Get along with other folks. Watch this, man. Watch this. I'm about to leave y'all alone. 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 Watch this. Jesus, when, when, when he was here on earth, he allowed love to dictate how he handled his enemies. Remember one night he was in the garden and here comes Judas, a crowd of armed men, clubs and soldiers. And they came to arrest Jesus. Judas told them that whichever one I kiss, lay hands on him. And, and Jesus comes, he sees, sees Judas coming and he says, friend, do what you can to do. He already knew. He couldn't have, it couldn't have been good enough for us. We went all the way on. Much as I've done for you, this is how you're going to do me. This is how you're going to handle I fed you, I told you. Did all, and now you're going to turn, and this is what you're going to do. But Jesus told us, watch this, watch this. If he could love a betrayal on that level, what's wrong with us? That's that pregnant pause. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. When love controls your mind and your emotions, you react to life differently. I know my mercy on. Anybody ever said something that you wish you could go back and take it back? Yep. Amen. 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 Brothers, you know that we all give to him. And you say something to your wife, it was 20 years ago. And she bring it up like it was 20 minutes ago. Amen. Amen. I know I'm right. I mean, I'm not going to look at her but she know, she know how to do it. Know how to do it well, brother. I'm telling you how to do it well. Amen. Chris, I know you know what I'm talking about. It says, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on. Amen. Just keep looking straight, brother. Don't look down. Don't look down. 
Get look at straight, I'll tell you. I, 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 but 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 sometimes you wish you could unring the bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you wish you could go back and unscramble the egg. But but one thing was said, it said it was done, it's done. But it's it's not always what was done to me. It was not always what was said to me. What God looks at is how do you respond when somebody did something you perceive to be wrong. Sometimes we we you ever heard the statement we, we want we want to take things into our own mm -hmm. and Judas came with these men mm -hmm. and here comes Peter come old loud mouth Peter old cussing Peter yeah. hot headed Peter yeah. and they grabbed Jesus and Peter pulled out his sword yeah. <laughs> cut one of the men's ear yeah. Jesus told him put the sword down Peter. And when you look at it, that's the last recorded miracle of Jesus in the text. Yeah. Covering up for what Peter did. Yeah. Hear me now. Is it possible that Peter had zeal, but he didn't have knowledge? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in his zeal, he thought he was doing the right thing. Yeah. So y'all better hear what I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. And Peter thought, I better handle this with force. I better handle this with violence. I better handle this quickly. But Jesus showed Peter, you got zeal, but you're not moving according to knowledge. So Jesus had to cover up our over, he had to cover up Peter's overzealousness. And some of us sitting in this room right now. You injured people because you thought you were right. You injured somebody that, that, that you thought you were doing the God thing. And like you and like me, God has had to come in many times and heal what we messed up. Some of us right now in our marriage, if, if God had not stepped in and healed what we messed up, yeah, yeah, yeah. if God had brought a healing to the word that we spoke, if he had brought healing to the actions that we performed, if God didn't do it, Amen. Amen. we wouldn't be together right now. Amen. 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 We kept right now, other people. Amen. Because every dog. Amen. Amen. And how you treat people when they wrong you Amen. becomes a template Amen. on how other people going to handle you. Amen. If you want somebody to forgive you when you did wrong, mm -hmm. you got to do the exact same thing. Amen. But you don't know how bad you done done some bad stuff. Amen. Amen. See, all this probably all these super saving folks over here. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. We've done some bad stuff. We've done some stuff. We've done some stuff that we brag about. Yeah. And then there's some other stuff we don't want nobody. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Take me to the grave. <laughs> Tell nobody. <laughs> I know about right, y'all. I know about right, y'all. I know about right, y'all. Right. Yeah. Amen. Watch it right here. Watch it right here. And Jesus had to come in and fix that. But when we you live in a frame or space where love is not the motivating factor mm -hmm. on how we interact with other people. We'll find ourselves falling out with somebody that used to be tighter than tight with us. Yeah. And then you look back on it. And you know what? Come here. Come here. Uh, Jane, you want to come and pray? And uh, Sister, Sister Barbie and, and Dr. Hunter, you two, y'all two over here. Put your mask on. You're going to be standing next to your wife. Oh, come on, man. I pray you and James, you and Barbara stay on that side right there. Pray you and Anna come right here in the middle. Face, face the congregation. Don't y'all see this. Watch this. James just did something. Somebody. He always does something. <laughs> <laughs> he 
just, I don't know how I do it, but I just, I just, I just, just felt that in the spirit, amen. And he did something, amen. And, 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 and it upset Bob. Upset her. And so they have intense conversation. And in the middle of it, watch this one. Look at the thing. I'll give some real words. This is real words. Twelve words. I want y'all to remember. Twelve words. Danny said, I did it. I did it. Fred. Oh, he swabbed it with me. <laughs> but somehow or another, Fred made Sister Anna man. And so now they're walking around, not speaking, in the house, grunting, <laughs> getting in bed, trying not to touch each other, got the blanket pulled tight between each other. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some y'all know what I'm talking about. See on your side? And never the two shall they come together. Amen. <laughs> Chicken Dolphin, he wasn't as bad as James and Fred. <laughs> Sister Dolphin got deep upset. Can you believe that? <laughs> he said, I knew she knew better, but she did anyway. We agreed on something and she went and, 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 and she did it and Deke is hot now. So all of them for different reasons are in the same place. All of them, there's something that's come between the harmony and the relationship. I'm telling you, I'm going to write, write these down. This, I'm telling you right here, in the middle of the argument, this is what you got to say. I was wrong. Watch this right here. Now he's over here whispering. He still ain't got it yet. He's talking about he ain't right. He ain't got it yet. Come on, man. Oh, Lord. No, no, no. Now watch this right here. Watch it. It works both ways now. Huh? I was wrong. Please forgive me. And I love you. Watch this right here. I was wrong. Please forgive me. And I love you. Now sometimes you gotta bust that out in the middle of the argument. Watch this right here. Let me see what I'm talking about. Can I just I'm just can I'm trying to help somebody here? See, when my wife and I used to argue like that. I would be wrong so much until whenever she would get me and I would write that one time. Oh, you were, oh, oh, no, no. I didn't let this go. You might have to tell me I was right. I was right. You know what I'm saying? I was wrong 99, but that one time. Oh, no. Okay. Mother, I'm not giving up that right. I'm not giving up. You know what I'm saying? And all the mother 99, I keep stalling until I can find something to argue about, to justify my behavior. When you're serious about working together and being together, you understand that sometimes you're going to say things and do things that's going to upset one another. Amen. Amen. But watch this. Jesus was up on the cross and he understood the difference between what was right and what was needed. And see, some of us get in trouble because we're so caught up on being right all the time. God can't heal you, God can't promote you, God can't move you forward because you're stuck on being right. But when Jesus was on the cross, the Bible says that they told him, if you're God, save yourself and come back. If you God, you're able to change the thing. And right would have said, let them die and all go to hell. 
But the need and the relationship said, Father, forgive them. But they know not. There comes a time, beloved, you got to choose the relationship over being right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't care if it's a, a husband and wife. I don't care if it's church member. I don't care if it's siblings. You got to come to a level of maturity where you say the relationship is more valuable to me than me trying to be right all the time. It's more important than for us to be in oneness than for me to act like I'm over keeping a scorecard. Amen. Lord, I'm going to try to help these. I don't know why the Lord had to get these three right here. I did not get something right here. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Amen. But watch this. Watch this. Everyone's standing. I want you all to see this. God wants us to get along with one another. Paul and Barnabas fell out tight, close brothers, but they allowed an opinion or a preference to separate their relationship. Listen. Don't cheat and create cheap relationships in your mind. Where if they don't, if they don't say what I want to say, if they don't do, I'm just gonna throw it away. I don't need them. I'm just gonna go. You gotta want and value the relationship. Value the relationship. Amen. 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 Just help anybody. Amen. Just help anybody. Hallelujah. You hear that? The first relationship that we need to work on is our relationship with God. Amen. Because if I can get my relationship with God right, yeah. by the power of His Holy Spirit, He'll show me and enable me to get relationship right with other folk in my life. Because there's some things that are so egregious, some wounds are so deep, some situations are so traumatic, that if it's not the power of God working, you will never get it right. But when you allow the Spirit of God to work in you and through you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. You hear right now? Pastor, I want to be saved. I need to get that relationship right. He said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. He said, the day that you hear my spirit knocking on the corners of your mind, just say yes to me. You hear right now. I extend an invitation to Christ. And then one person said, Pastor, I believe in Jesus. I believe he lived. I believe he was born a virgin. I believe he lived some 33 years. Hung out on Brother Crawl. Died. Resurrected on the third day morning. Is that one? That was said, Pastor, I want to give my life to Christ. I want to restore that relationship. Every head by no one looking around. Is that you? Is that you, ma'am? Is that you, sir? That the Lord is saying, let's fix our relationship. Let's reconcile our relationship. Maybe you're here and you're already saved, but somehow you allow yourself to become alienated. Is that you? Just lift your hand right where you stand. And that's you, can I just get you to step out and tell you, I don't know who it is. I see you, sir. I see you. Don't, don't miss this thing. Don't miss the troubling of the water. Pastor, I want to be saved. I want to rededicate my life. Is there another one that will say yes today? Hallelujah. What else does God have to do? What else does he have to show you? 
How many ways does he have to make before you realize that I need him? Glory to God. Glory to God. Is there one here that would say, Pastor, I want to become a member of this church? The door of the church is now open. Sir, will you come down here for me? Just come down and stand out here. Hallelujah. It's that right now. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. If you have another that would say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Christ. Pastor, I want to rededicate my life. Don't, don't disarm. It's so simple. We may play it all spooky and all hard, but, but the Bible says that if you can just believe that the Lord was resurrected. Jesus is the Christ. If you can confess that and believe in your heart, shall be saved. Will you come? Will you come? Hallelujah. My final call is, is there anyone that says, Pastor, I need you to pray for me? I got some relationship stuff that I need to get right. I need, I need some stuff I need to work on. If that's you, I want you to come down this aisle right now. Get to this altar as fast as you can. Lord, I need healing in relationships. Hallelujah. Work on some stuff in me, God. Work on some stuff in me. Work on some stuff in me. Heal some things in me. Is that something I know? Hallelujah. Don't miss this right now. Somebody came in and right now you're worried about what people are going to say. You're worried about what they might think about you. But don't worry about what somebody might think. Just know that God already knows what's in you. And he's calling you now. He's calling you now. He's calling you now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Send healing now, God. Send healing now, God. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all stand together. Go. No. I see it. I see it. Hallelujah. I see it. I'm telling you right now. Listen, I, 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 don't, I don't know who, who who's in here right now, but I can just feel like that's yeah. like a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, it's like, it's like two people pulling you on both sides. And the Holy Ghost is saying, just let go. Just release it. He'll bring healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for your people now. Thank you. Just like Peter, God, we've all messed up some stuff. Some of us are wounded because of others. Some of us, God, have wounded others. But God, all of us have sinned and come short of your glory. And so, Lord, right now, we need your power. We need your mercy, God. Touch right now. Heal right now. Marriages, relationships, family relationships. Heal right now. What the enemy called us to mess up. Mess up with our mouth. Mess up with our actions and attitudes. God thank you. For covering us like you did, Peter. Thank you for being a God of another chance. Lord, I praise you. I praise your name now. Yeah. Lord, we lay on this altar. Yeah. And God, we give your name praise today. Yeah. I thank you right now that what the enemy meant for evil, yeah. you working it out for our good. Yeah. Yeah. It was good I had to walk by myself. Yeah. It was good I had to cry sometimes. Yeah. It was good I was going to say, because now I realize that, Lord, I need you as you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus.
Lord, I thank you for it. Thank you for your people, God. Heal right now. Let the wind of your spirit blow. Let it blow, let it blow, let it blow. Let it blow, Lord. Break up that thing that's on the inside. Break up that stony heart, God. Break it up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God, we need your power! Thank you, God. Yeah, no, 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 no. He is high! God, do what you can do. Have your way, God. Have your way. Have your way. Mercy, mercy, mercy! Mercy! God, I thank you. We can't do it without you. Father, God, give us what we need. Lord, I thank you. And Lord, right now, we release. Y'all hear me now. Lord, we release those that offended us. We release those who wronged us. We release and it still bothers us. It still upsets us sometimes. But God, I'm not going to hold on to it no longer. I'm not going to dwell on it any longer. I'm just going to release it. It's in your hands, God. It's in your hands. You said, cast all your care upon you. But you care for us. So, Lord, it's on you now. Help us, God. In Jesus' name. We say, Amen. 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 Come on, put your best hands together. Stand right where you are. Stand right where you are. Hallelujah. Yes. Brother, right here, brother, what, what are you coming for? Uh, healing, everything. Are you saved? Yes, sir. Okay. We dedicate our life to Christ. I got saved at a young age. We dedicate to live for the Lord. Yes. Amen. Are you having church home? Huh? You want to become a member here? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. You sure? Are you sure? I said, are you sure? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh.